allow me to provide a brief introduction about myself. I am an old-fashioned economist, though my professional pursuits diverge from the conventional realms of finance and profit generation. My sphere revolves around ideas, ideals, and aspirations, a world striving to affect positive change. Admittedly, the drawback of working towards an ideal world is that the emphasis on financial efficiency can sometimes waver, which is precisely where my role becomes relevant. Thank you for your understanding and attention. In the 1980s, when the AIDS crisis reverberated across the globe, I, alongside friends, resolved to establish the Dutch AIDS Foundation. It stood as the singular fundraising entity for AIDS in the Netherlands, and it has since expanded its reach to international efforts. In the 1990s, I established a worldwide association for individuals living with HIV or AIDS. Presently, their organization holds a prominent position as a board member within the United Nations AIDS program. They play a pivotal role in co-organizing World AIDS conferences, drawing attendance from over 25,000 participants, and I had the privilege of participating in the organization of a few of these conferences. Additionally, they engage in negotiations with the pharmaceutical industry to secure their support in addressing challenges in the global south. After 10 years of fighting AIDS, everybody had a career, study, funding for Theor Institute. I needed a leap year, job done. But that leap year obviously did not happen. On my way, I ran into the biggest event ever to be organized in Amsterdam that needed a sponsor raiser. That sponsor raiser would be me, raising funds for the highly successful Gay Games, 1998 in Amsterdam. It was at this juncture that my headhunter found me, seeking a resolute manager, to orchestrate Velo Mondial 2000, the second global cycling conference. The dilemma lay in its reluctance to seamlessly come together owing to the very factor I highlighted earlier. At the outset, their emphasis was on ideals rather than the practicalities of organization, and thus commenced my voyage into the realm of cycling. I orchestrated the conference, and its attendees dubbed it their best ever gathering. I graciously accepted their praise, but added, Consider this. If this conference, organized by an outsider with no prior knowledge of cycling, stands as your best, then there's an issue. I asked them if they'd be interested in collaborating on something more substantial. Unfortunately, their response wasn't affirmative, as they were uncertain about the future's direction. For me, this was an indication that the market was open and I could embark on organizing things as I saw fit. To guide my journey, I formulated two principles that have steered my career for the past 25 years. The first principle was to approach things in a manner entirely opposite to the existing norms, direct and focused on the essence. So, I declared, I'm going to make cycling glamorous all over the world. To keep myself distinct, from what some referred to as the idealistic types, the tree-huggers and woolly-jumpers, I established my second principle. I know nothing about cycling, and I intend to keep it that way. And so I embarked on my path. My initial stop was the European Commission. I emphasized that cycling deserved Europe's support. To my surprise, they couldn't endorse my ambitions. My contact explained, there is no body of work. Confused, I asked, what does no body of work mean? In 2001, he explained that not a single document about cycling resided on the European Commission's shelves. He tasked me with conducting the first study on cycling in Europe and producing that inaugural document. And I did just that since then. I've engaged in numerous European cycling projects, building a network of partners that form an international community dedicated to promoting quality of life in cities through cycling.